Okay, well, I'm connected up. I've got my three volts there and my four and a half volts there. So let's pop the power on. Let's see, yeah, yeah. Still working, which is good news. Tune in, up and down. Let me just get the front panel a minute so I know which button does what here. Okay, so FM is going to be that one. Let's go 100. Band. Let's go with AM. Should be Radio 4, but I probably got too much stuff on to test that out fully at the moment. Um, so, got different settings on here. Narrow. Stuff on here. Let's turn some stuff off a minute. to um, get it assembled a little bit better and check the um, antenna connections but I reckon that is sorted so uh, the only other problem I've got now is the um, flat cable connector Let's just turn a bit of light back on here so we can see what we're up to maniac dogs downstairs as you can hear Let's put the brightness back up a bit. Yeah, so it looks like we are in business. So again, a big thanks to Manuel from Spain for sending me that uh, part. Okay, I'm making good progress on uh, putting this back together. You'll see by the board that um, it's had a full 100% recap 
every single electrolytic's been done. Um, that took an age and was pretty scary. Um, well worthwhile doing, but um, quite costly as far as the parts and the labour is concerned for doing it. Now, I've actually just desoldered this uh, dodgy, or broken, flat, uh, flex, well, flat flexible cable connector. That's the other part of it there. So what I'm going to do is pop it out of circuit. There we go. There's a couple things I could do here. Um, oh, sorry, let's zoom you in. That's where it goes. That's where the connector goes there. Look. You can see it's um, five pins on the top and four on the bottom. So you can't get it the wrong way around. Um, the problem is, is the plastic clip has snapped off of this side. You can see we've got the plastic clip here. Just like a, a U-shaped piece. But we only have one leg. So that needs replacing, but I don't think... Well, I haven't been able to find one anyway. Um, again, it's it's a, it's a stressed part, so gluing I don't think is going to do the job. So I need to find another one from somewhere. Or I put the cable in it, fix it with some silicone, like fix it in place with some silicone, and solder it back into the board with it fixed in place. Um, then I know I've got a good joint on it, but it, it just makes it awkward if anyone's got to take it apart in the future. You know, I don't suppose it's my problem really, but end of the day, I like to have things right, so. Um, I'm going to see if I can find one of those online somewhere. Um, John, I think, did ask me the pin pitch on it. Well, it's um, it's a row of five and a row of four. Let me just get my caliper and see if I can work a pin pitch out. Okay, well, apologies in advance for the 3D printer going in the background. Um, I possibly voiced this over, but uh, the item of interest is down here. I've soldered back in the nine pin connector. Apologies for the uh, lack of audio, but uh, I am printing in the background. Here you can see the uh, FFC connector back in place, all soldered back in. Just really iron up the cables now. Uh, that one is a little bit bent, so it had to be straightened out before it went in. This is the stuff I ordered uh, from RS, Servisol Silicone Adhesive Sealant. It's non-corrosive, so uh, I'm confident that uh, that's not going to affect any of the cables or joints. So uh, really, it's just a case now of putting it all back together, putting it in position, and then uh, laying a bead of silicone at either side of this cable with it in position and, and locked in. I am going to still use the uh, little plastic tag that goes on the top, so uh, hopefully that will all hold, and uh, we'll see how we get on. Anyway, let's uh, fast forward a bit here and uh, get to the end of this clip. Okay, I'm just fast forwarding this bit, um, a bit boring just watching me fiddling about there, but yeah, basically I've got it in place, um, squeezing out a bit of silicone around the back edge, both both ends, just to make sure that that clip doesn't pop up, and uh, just using a cocktail stick to get around the back, and uh, make that nice and smooth, so it's still got to look nice. We're just continuing with the voiceover now, as uh, I've still got the printer going in the background. Here, uh, just doing the bit of final reassembly, um, checking that the volume slider is in. A little bit tricky to get that one in. It's uh, the slider pops over like a, a metal tab. You need to make sure that's in position. And, uh, just going to give it a quick uh, click with a screwdriver and make sure it's totally in correctly, which it is. Um, Yes, say it is very difficult to get these apart and uh, put them back together. So, um, <laughs> not for the faint-hearted. Just uh, really now looking at the manual as well because the screw sizes are important. 
There's uh, God knows how many different screw sizes on it. <coughs> and uh, I believe there's three on the back here, so just going to uh, go over the position of them. And uh, there we go. One, two, one in the middle and one at the top right. So uh, also the board clips down. There's some plastic lugs on there as well. Okay, no point to boring you by uh, <laughs> watching all this, but I've sped it up a bit just so as you can see roughly what's involved. Um, if anyone does want a more detailed uh, video of putting it back together, then I can do that if you need it. But um, you should be able to get the gist of it from this. It's um, it's just really fiddly and making sure that you've got all your screws, you haven't lost any, and that you're putting the right size screws in the right holes which uh, really is where the manual comes into its own I mean I do sort of document ev everything by video and uh, very often you, you get two screws that look identical and you'll find one that's uh, a few mil longer you put it in the wrong hole you could damage a board so well worth just uh, making doubly sure and I'd certainly recommend getting the manual or a good copy of it okay so I'll put the strap back on now that's uh, Lee did give me the strap when he sent it it's just a quick um, quick reminder that uh, these sets will not work unless you've got these two AA batteries in the, I think they call it the computer batteries in the manual, but basically just powers up the processor I believe. Um, but yeah, if you've not got these batteries in, you will not be able to turn the set on, which is a bit strange. Um, even if you're using an external power supply, you still need to have these two little batteries in. So if your radio's dead, and um, you've got the power supply and everything connected and you can't tune anything then uh, it's more than likely that the two double A's are flat okay this is the correct adapter for this radio so it's a four and a half volt Sony adapter this is a for one of my radios that's got the correct size pin on the end um, and it looks like it's centre pin negative so uh, that goes in the side there I'm going to flick the mains power switch off at the moment, put some power on it. It's a CPU, battery's obviously working because you can see there's a, a 001 on the display. So if I pop the main power switch up and then pop that up. We have power. So let's switch to FM. Now let's go to classical FM 100. I'm going to test again. The West End is ahead, Mr. Chris Mike says he's fit enough to play after recovering from a side strain. It's been longer than expected. You know, I was hoping to be oh, ready for the well. South Africa series. That hasn't happened, you know, to give us a little bit more time. That's all you can do is go on the time scale and the fact that it feels good. Well, I've taken the news as well. It's at 5 o'clock. Let's try AM. an external aerial to it now as you can hear and that's uh, on the uh, 40 meter 20 meter <laughs> even amateur band 14187 and that's uh, a station in Greece coming in Thank you very much, my friend. 
Radio 5 by 7, 57 in Island of Crete, Bart, my name is Nikos Kiesel. Nikos in Crete. Hey, 73 my friend, many thanks, bye-bye. Okay, well, that's certainly picking up well. Um, let me think, let's try 40 meters. Should be in lower sideband there. That's enough crackling and buzzing noises <laughs> and the sound of my 3D printer. Anyway, the radio was all done, uh, went through it all, all working fine, no issues at all. Um, as I say, there was an issue with the some little miniature wires on the jack board that connect the ferrite antenna, so uh, hence why it wasn't. It was working with the external aerial plugged in, but it wasn't working on the internal aerial, so... Uh, that was just a case of uh, popping the back off again and uh, checking those connections and re-soldering them. Again, very well worthwhile uh, just making a note off those set uh, wires. Do a little diagram like I did, because they will come off, so there's no doubt about it. Anyway, thanks for watching this. Um, it's been a real long series. Uh, the radio's now back with its owner, and uh, he's well chuffed with it. It's, it's working better than it ever did, so... Uh, a job well done. Uh, hopefully I don't get too many more of these. Thanks again for watching and uh, join me on another video soon. Bye for now.